Hi everyone, my name is Jillian Parker. Sorry we're a little late. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty today, but we really wanted to get together with Dr. Stephen Schultz, who's joining us, a pediatrician with Rochester Regional Health, to discuss a topic that a lot of parents have questions about right now, and that is the New York State guidance on COVID-19 testing in schools. Dr. Schultz, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Now, just to kind of get everyone up to speed, Monroe County is currently in the yellow zone. That's as of today, November 18th, because we don't know where that could stand in a week or two's time. Governor Cuomo had implemented specific guidelines on a new zone system labeling counties as either yellow, orange, or red based on their rate of positive COVID cases, which means that there will be testing going on in schools. And actually some of that testing has already gotten underway. So Dr. Schultz, I just want to start with, uh, you know, can you tell us exactly what that means in the school systems, the fact that Monroe County is in the yellow zones. What does that mean for students, uh, teachers, and staff? So um, the Department of Health is supplying the testing kits, their rapid antigen tests, and um, the requirement is that 20% of um, the school population needs to be tested. And, uh, and this includes students and staff um, as part of the yellow zone procedures uh, in order to continue to stay open. Um, the steps um, that they're being conducted within the schools and mm -hmm. the results come back quick, quickly, they're a nasal swab. Um, families do have the option to opt in or opt out of this testing, and that does not affect whether or not they can be in or out of school. And so that is an important point to know. Um, but the idea is that if we can show that um, we are doing a good job of keeping COVID under control in schools, which we anticipate we will, mm -hmm. that that'll allow us to continue to operate schools safely and for a longer time period, um, showing that they're under the rate that's happening in the community. And you mentioned that you know parents can opt their kids out or opt in of getting tested. What um, happens if uh, you know a parent opts out for their child? Is can their student still go to school? Does that student have to begin remote learning? Does anything change there? No, nothing changes there. As long as the student is healthy, they can continue to go to school. Now, I know a lot of questions for parents is, you know, the invasive level of invasiveness for these tests. But in fact, there are two different nasal or two different swab tests that uh, I think some people might not realize. Can you talk about the difference in the two tests and which one is being used in schools um, and how much yeah. less invasive that one is than maybe the one that people are most used to getting if they've been tested before. Yeah, so the one that's being done in schools is just a swab in the anterior part of the nose and just one nostril, uh, a swab around, it's not uh, deep or uh, invasive or uncomfortable at all. Um, if we have a child who has active symptoms and we really want to know whether or not they have COVID uh, or not, then the best test in that case is a nasopharyngeal swab, um, which involves sticking the swab through the nose and into the back of the throat. Uh, it is briefly uncomfortable, but um, you know it's, it's done in a moment's time and that gets us the best sample to be able to give us the most accurate results for that child. Because the um, nasal swab is not quite as accurate as um, the nasopharyngeal swab, does that mean that if a student were to test positive with the nasal swab, they would get, then have to have the other test as well, or? That is a consideration. Um, if that student tests positive, um, were to found were have to been found to have some symptoms of some sort so maybe mom sent him to school because he thought it was just she thought it was just seasonal allergies and that was all it was but um turned out to be positive if, if it there are any symptoms or if there's any recent exposure to somebody with covid in that case we wouldn't need a follow-up test we would consider that a positive but if the child is truly asymptomatic um truly has not had any exposure to covid um, it is an option to repeat the nasopharyngeal test that has to be a nasopharyngeal PCR test in order to confirm uh, that initial one. Okay. If that follow-up test is negative, we are going to go based on the PCR uh, confirmatory test as opposed to the swab. 
Okay, so just the hypothetical, someone tests positive with the nasal swab, uh, they get the nasopharyngeal swab as well, and that tests negative. Does that test trump the nasal swab? It, it does. Okay. Um, and if, it's, if a student tests positive for COVID-19, you know, what happens from that point on as far as uh, quarantining is concerned? So if they do test positive, uh, the local health department is going to get involved and do the interviews and, and ask all the questions. But chances are in that case that, yes, the um, entire household would be uh, quarantined. Okay. Now, you know, we mentioned testing is already underway. We've seen underway. We've seen a few initial results come in from some school superintendents and the county. And they're finding in Monroe County that the numbers are still low in the schools. Um, and it was recently revealed in the US that more than a million people now have been, or a million kids have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and recently a rise in cases with kids. Um, you know, what are you seeing right now as compared to the first wave of COVID-19 when it comes to kids? So uh, a lot of this is based on community prevalence. Uh, throughout the summer months, folks were social distancing. They weren't in close quarters. Uh, our rates throughout the community were low. And we were certainly seeing that in children as well. Um, as the community goes, that's where the positive cases go. And so now, as we're starting to see more cases in the community, we're seeing more positive results. There's no doubt. But those results aren't being, those positives aren't happening in schools. They're happening in the community, and um, you know that's why all the screening recommendations and guidelines are in place, and the attestation for no symptoms and fever uh, and temperature checks and all those sorts of things are happening to make sure that those cases that are happening in the community aren't coming into the school, and why it's so important that if your child has any illness symptoms at all or has had any recent exposure to someone with COVID that they stay home. The schools are doing a fantastic job of following safety protocols and plans and, and keeping rates of transmission in the school to almost none. A lot of different opinions right now as far as kids getting tested in the schools. What is it that you, any kind of message that you wanna tell parents who are uh, feeling cautious about their kids being tested? Um, you know, we do know that these rapid antigen tests, while not perfect, are uh, pretty well reliable. And the hope is, is that the more we can show that rates are low in the schools, the more likely we'll be able to keep the doors open for schools, even if there are rates that are increasing in the community. So that would be the encouragement I would uh, give you to, to opt in. And uh, uh, for what it's worth, I've, I've opted in for my own son to be tested as well. Dr. Schultz, is there anything else that you want to add? And maybe just because you do have that uh, you can relate to this situation a bit, the fact that you have a kid yourself in school. Um, anything else that you want to add? Um, just uh, keep wearing masks um, outside in the community, keep social distancing. Um, we know we have the holidays coming up and people want to get together for Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, but um, this is really a year to stay virtual. Um, I know that we will be a family of three for Thanksgiving and uh, for Christmas as well. Uh, and we plan to you know, do some FaceTiming with uh, friends and families, but um, we really are seeing a lot of spread in these smaller gatherings within homes. And that's where uh, Governor Cuomo's put in the 10, you know, no more than 10 people in a private residence home. Um, you know, we really are encouraging folks at this time in order to help contain the spread uh, to, to keep, stick to their immediate family whenever possible. Dr. Schultz, thank you so much. I have one final question um, that just popped in my head now. I'm just curious about age requirements. Um, is there any kind of an age requirement as far as, you know, a six-year-old being tested for COVID versus a 17-year-old who's in high school being tested for COVID? They're, they're all uh, opportunities for being tested if, um, you know, they uh, opt in, if the, if the parents opt in. Yep. Dr. Schultz, thank you so much for taking some time helping to um, ease some of those fears and questions that a lot of parents out there probably are having right now. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.